In this example problem, we have a spring on a horizontal frictionless surface. It's anchored over here on the left on a wall. And we're going to have someone come in and for this one mass that's at the end of the spring, this mass is not attached to the end of the spring, but someone is going to come here and push on this mass and compress the spring. Um, the mass originally has, or sorry, the spring has originally has a length 18 centimeters and the spring constant is 420 newtons per meter. The mass that's being pushed against the spring is 200 grams and this spring is compressed until the mass is just 5 centimeters from the wall. Then the uh, spring is going to be released. The spring will push on the mass and come over here and will have a collision between the two masses and in this collision it's inelastic. This object is going to stick to this object and as they uh, continue through the collision, uh, when that collision is done, 50% of the kinetic energy is lost. Uh, it's no longer in mechanical energy form. So the remaining kinetic energy is going to be 50% of what came in. Then the two masses go off the edge of a table, uh, 1.5 meters off of the floor, and we have the uh, projectile motion of the object in. We want to know what distance away from the edge of the table these two objects land. So how would you approach this problem? Um, in order to get our projectile motion uh, concept here, this uh, range, this x value, we need to know the speed in the x direction and we need to know the time in the air. Well this vx initial, that'll be provided to us from analysis of the motion of the spring pushing the mass and the motion and the collision that occurs. What about the time in the air? The time the object is in the air is related to the height of the table. So we have 1.5 meters and we'll be able to use the kinematic equations to uh, give us the time to drop down 1.5 meters. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, think about the velocity coming in again. Uh, can we use the kinematic equations up here with the spring? And the answer is no. The force of the spring is variable. F equals minus kx. So as the spring compression changes, the force changes, that means the acceleration of this object is not constant. So we cannot use the uh, kinematic equations. Instead, we'll use conservation of energy. When the spring is compressed, there's potential energy put into the spring that's going to get released and we come back to this um, 18 centimeter stretch back to the case where the compression and extension value is zero. We're at x equals zero here with this relaxed spring. When again we reach x equals zero for the uh, case analysis of the spring uh, motion, then we have the collision take place. So all the potential energy in the spring goes to kinetic energy uh, of this 200 gram object, then we have the collision. So let's uh, analyze that. The potential energy will be 1 half k x squared. The k values given is 420 newtons per meter. How did I come up with 0.13 meters for the compression distance? Well, the spring relaxed has a length of 18 centimeters. We're compressing here until the distance from the wall is 5 centimeters. 5 centimeters is not the compression distance. 13 centimeters is the compression distance. So 5, 13, we get 18. Um, we have to square that uh, compression distance. You should pause and do this on your calculator. I came up with 3.549 joules for the... Uh, potential energy that now becomes kinetic energy of this 200 gram object. We have a collision take place. We're told that 50% of the kinetic energy is lost. That means 50% of the kinetic energy will now be in this combined object of uh, 400 grams when the two objects stick together. Okay, let's go a little further. We want to know the velocity in the x direction. So the kinetic energy 
the remaining kinetic energy, 1.7745 joules, is now the kinetic energy of the two objects together. So 200 grams, 200 grams, that's 0.4 kilograms. One half mv squared being used here. And again, use your calculator. I think you'll find that the velocity in the x direction, this x direction is our surface that's horizontal, uh, is 2.979 meters per second. Now, for the projectile motion, the x distance is the velocity in the x direction. That's a constant. We're going to ignore air resistance. So we have a constant uh, 2.979 meters per second. We need the time in the air. And uh, analyzing the vertical motion with this uh, y equation, this vertical equation, the distance covered in the y direction is equal to the initial y velocity multiplied by time in the air plus one half uh, gt squared. Uh, we know that the if I call the y value 0 at the top of the table, and I'm going to work this with upward being the positive direction. So if y equals 0 on this horizontal surface, we've dropped down 1.5 meters. So I use a minus 1.5 meters for the s. The initial velocity in the y direction is 0. As these as these two objects come off the horizontal surface, they're moving purely in the x direction. They've not yet started dropping towards the Earth. So the initial y velocity is 0. So it creates a 0 term. 1 half, the acceleration due to gravity is downward. That's the negative direction. So I attach a minus sign to the 9.8 meters per second squared, and then uh, time squared. So again, pause, use your calculator. I found time in the air to be 0.553 seconds, and with that information we can complete the analysis. The distance away from the edge of our table here is 2.979 meters per second. That's our rate of motion constant in the x direction, multiplied by the time in the air, 0.553 seconds, and I came up with 1.65 meters. Um, so again, in this analysis, um, at the start, I could not use the kinematic equations. The spring force is variable. The acceleration is, of this object is variable. We have to use the analysis of energy. The spring potential energy becomes kinetic energy of our object, but only 50% survives to the two objects after the collision occurs. So that kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. We found the speed, and this is the speed in the x direction. For the projectile motion, we use distance equals rate times time. We have a constant rate here, so this uh, concept is legal. Uh, as long as the rate is constant, we can use distance equals rate times time. We found the time by using the analysis of the y motion. So ask your instructor if you have any uh, questions with this. If you would like some more example problems with uh, physics or astronomy, um, these are the two websites, physics.gpclements.com, astronomy.gpclements.com. Uh, nothing to buy at these sites, just a list of videos and description of what they uh, contain. Um, and please ask your instructor and keep working your own problems. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel.